Uh, according to Section 4 of the Office of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions Act, the Minister of Finance is responsible for the Office of the Superintendent of Official Institutions. Is this correct? Yes or no? Thank you. And again, for Mr. Lee Singh, uh, how much will it cost financial institutions and companies to comply with Aussie's climate-related financial disclosure requirements? I'm not well positioned to talk about uh, the costs and the relationship between FIs and OSFI. I believe OSFI does work on a sort of cost recovery market uh, model, I should say. Um, but I don't know what those costs might be. I think that would require a follow-up directly with OSFI. So you're, you are, your minister is responsible for OSFI, and yet you, you don't know what... I personally don't know. Did the Finance Department conduct an analysis of how much OSFI's mandatory climate-related financial disclosure expectations will cost companies? Yes or no? No. You did not? No, I don't know. I apologize. No, the question was, did the Finance Department conduct an analysis of how much OSFI's mandatory climate-related financial disclosure expectations will cost companies? You're telling me the Finance Department did not do... I'm sorry. If I'm saying that I'm not aware of anything. How about Ms. Weir? Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, for the question. No, I'm sorry. I, as I said before, I've been responsible for federally regulated pension plans. That is uh, an area that's outside my expertise. So no one's aware... Uh, Mr. Barb? I'm, I'm not aware. Thank you for, for the question. I'm not aware uh, either. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Uh, uh, Mr. Barb, if Canada adopted all 15 recommendations in the final report of this export panel on sustainable finance, how many emissions would be reduced in Canada as a re direct result? Um, I, well, first of all, I... I don't believe that uh, we are on the path to adopting all those those recommendations. So um, I don't think it's been it's been costed um, from that that perspective. Um, Isn't that what this is all about? Reducing emissions? Right. But what what I'm saying is that I don't think we've we've necessarily tallied or uh, come up with a tally for for recommendations that you know aren't necessarily going to be to be pursued. For how many emissions will be reduced for, by following these regulations? I, I think I think and I will go now to, to Mr. Longfield. But I think what Mr. Barb is saying—I don't want to put words in your mouth, Mr. Barb—but they're still developing uh, the recommendations, and as they develop them, they'll they'll calculate the cost and the uh, impact on emissions. Is that correct? Just maybe to clarify the question, Mr. Chair, we're, we're talking about the two initiatives that we just, uh, my colleagues just announced in, in terms of the, um, or focused on in terms of the taxonomy or climate disclosures or because the expert panel went beyond that. I just want to be clear on the okay. question. And you have no idea now how we'll many emissions are being Longfield. reduced. We'll go now to Mr. Longfield. So, Mr. Deltel, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good morning, colleagues. Always a pleasure to see you. And... Uh, especially after a week in our respective ridings as we resume work. Uh, welcome uh, to our witnesses, and uh, thank you for giving your talent and energies for uh, the benefit of Canada. As officials, uh, we appreciate that uh, tremendously. We're all here this morning. We want to be as efficient as possible in terms of climate change. We have to adapt to the effects of climate change, and we have to have the right measures in place to do so, particularly if it's an issue of financing. So how can we fund the best approaches, and how can we guide businesses and financiers, uh, financiers in the choices that they make to fight climate change? But uh, these steps, these measures have to be effective. We remember that the official Commissioner of the Environment tabled reports um, that are very critical of the approaches we've taken in this country. The uh, report concludes in a brutal fashion, saying that Canada will not be in a position to achieve its objectives for two 2030, which, uh, if I might remind you, are based on the Paris Accord, and they decided on the targets 
that uh, what the previous government had established at the time, the same. So concluding from the Commissioner of the Environment's report that Canada has a worst record and uh, of, that's of all the G7 countries, so we're far from achieving our objectives. More directly speaking, Mr. Chairman, if we put our finger on the major problem, that is to say how to um, assess the efficacy of these measures, this comes from businesses when they make their decisions regarding financing, and whether it's pension funds who want to uh, invest in a green approach, if we can co um, calculate things correctly, and that's why I'm uh, following with this question, which I will ask to Mr. Barb, who works for the Environment Commission. The commissioner said that, that uh, the reduction of uh, emissions by 2030 was not a, uh, was more of a revision of the data that was used in the model. And so, Mr. Barb, you're at the department. You have an important role to play. How can you explain? It's not us saying this. This is the com commissioner that we have targets and that we are led to believe that we are achieving these goals, and then the Commissioner of the Environment says no, but the method of calculating the results has changed. Thank you for the question. Just perhaps to clarify, we all have different responsibilities at the department, and I work really in the terms of uh, sustainable finance, so this is a question that's a little bit beyond my expertise, just to say that at the outset. What I can say is that we had a report from the, about on the emissions reduction plan, and that was published in 2023 at the end of the year, which indicated that we, we are on a target in terms of meeting our 2030 objectives. And that there's, a, there's something missing, there's a little gap, if I can put it that way. As you know, the target really is 40 to 45 percent below our 2030 um, greenhouse gas emissions by 2030, and we're at about 36 percent, according to my department's um, figures. So the gap uh, that remains will be closed with other measures that we will use. And uh, I, we expect that provinces and territories and Indigenous groups will also be making contributions to that. So the, what you said about the Commissioner's report, report um, in response to that question, those are the figures that we have as a department. I'd be pleased to um, ask the question of my colleagues who can give a more detailed answer to you. If I may, I'd, I'd like to go a little bit further, Mr. Barb. This is directly in line with what you are uh, doing, and I explain. We're talking about financing here and the financing of businesses, of the choices that institutions have to make when they're going to have environmental policies. So you have to recognize if those are effective or not. So we have said, or we've seen rather, in the Commissioner's report that the figures given are not there as a result of the government, but of changes that were made in the methods of calculation, and that's where it's not okay. We are all wanting to reduce pollution and greenhouse gases, but we have to have the right approaches. We've had one approach for the last nine years, which in my opinion is not the best, or the right one, and particularly it's illustrated in the Commissioner's report, because if some people say that things are going better, it's because they changed their method of calculation. So that's not exactly the right approach. There's another point I want to raise with you, and it's the issue of transparency and disclosure of information. Now, once again, the Commissioner, and this concerns the entire department, he said, there's not just a lack of transparency in the responsibilities in terms of greenhouse gas reductions. They are unclear. The federal government has not established a pan-governmental approach that is standardized for the optimization of resources. How is it that after nine years, the government has not been uh, in a position to act transparently and consistently in order to g tell Canadians the reality? Okay, you've gone beyond your six minutes. 